Good afternoon, wherever you're joining us from. It's really great to have you online and to just spend the next hour with you sharing ideas and lessons around sustainability and equity. It's very interesting that in three days from now, we will be celebrating International Women's Day, one of several days on the calendar where the whole world pauses to think and rethink some big buzzwords that we'd all, we always use, such as equity, inclusiveness, and what that really means in action and in practice and in our daily living. My name is Fumi Adeni, and I manage our rights-based approaches work at ICLE Africa. I'm excited to facilitate this webinar today, and I am glad to e-meet all of you. I would definitely like to meet you all. However, given the time constraints that we'll have, let's be a little creative about how we meet each other today. And so I'm going to invite you all to introduce yourselves through the chat function, but we're going to make it very interesting. I'm going to ask that you please type your name and the city you're joining us from. Don't post it just yet. Just type your name and the city you're joining us from. And then we will all count down and we will make it rain as a shower just to know where you're joining us from. So shall I give us 15 seconds to type our names and where we're joining from? No posting yet. And so I begin my countdown. And once I count down up to zero, we all post at the same time. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, post. Oh, beautiful to see where we're all from. Malmo, Germany, Cape Town, city of Cape Town, Cape Town again, Germany. Looks like it's almost a tie between Malmo and Cape Town here. <laughs> You're joining us from once again, whether it's morning where you are or it's afternoon, I'll, I say welcome once again. Back to the business of today, the Malmo commitment empowers local governments to prioritize people in sustainable development, fostering inclusive communities and ensuring fair transitions to a sustainable economy. The Malmo commitment tour consists of five webinars, each focusing on specific regions, Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, and South America. This kickoff webinar on the African region aims to raise awareness and knowledge among ICLE network mayors. Today, we have the pleasure to sit back, to learn, to listen, to contribute to an enthralling conversation between two African leaders and the mayor of Malmo. But just before we launch into the leaders dialogue, I would like to invite you all to weigh in by sharing through the poll now displayed on your screen. And that poll should be showing up just now. To join the poll, you can just scan the QR code or click the link in the browser. And let's spend two minutes responding to the poll. And the question is very simple. To what extent is equity already embedded in your city's sustainable development? work.
please feel free to partake in the poll, noting that your responses are anonymous. If you also do not feel comfortable responding, we do understand that. We hope you will be able to join in terms of asking questions during the conversation, but some of the responses are coming up on the screen. It's embedded in policy, but not always in practice, in some sectorial plans, e.g. in mobility and climate. It's still in progress, including a diverse population in policy making. Great, I'm excited about some of the responses I'm seeing here. I think that alludes to the diversity also of the participants that are here, knowing that the different cities where we all come from, we have different entry points into the work around equity and sustainability. Some cities being rather far advanced, others being at the starting point, and some gradually gathering momentum to move along that journey on equity in our sustainability journey. On that note, I will hand over to Mayor, Mayor Catherine Jame to present the Malmo commitment and to kickstart the Leaders' Dialogue. Thank you. Mayor? So, thank you very, uh, very much uh, for me. And uh, thank you, all of you, for joining today. Uh, my name is Katrin schanfeldt jamme as you heard, and I'm the mayor of Malmö in Sweden. And I'm also the first vice president of ICLE. And uh, Malmö has been an ICLE member for quite a while, actually, uh, quite many years by now. And we are an ICLE member because we believe in sharing. We have high ambitions when it comes to sustainability and develop uh, and how we develop our city. And we learned that we do our work much, much better if we collaborate with others. And I realized when I was elected mayor 10 years ago that even if if I if I meet mayors from all over the world, even if we work during very yeah, different uh, uh, conditions. We still have very much in common and we are stronger when we collaborate together. Uh, two years ago, we uh, hosted the ICLE World Congress. Actually, we were supposed to do it three years ago, but then due to the pandemic, we have to postpone uh, some part of it. And uh, when we had the ICLE World Congress in, in Malmö and the opportunity to welcome the world to Malmö, we also launched this Malmö commitment. And I'll give you a brief, brief uh, presentation about the commitment. Um, I think it is interesting to see that you have uh, a very high level of awareness amongst mayors all over the world that we need to do the job when it comes to uh, the green transition that needs to be done. Uh, but mayors all over the world also face lots of different problems within their cities and they meet uh, their citizens on an everyday basis. And we all know that our citizens want us to solve the problems and they don't really care whether we have uh, the formal responsibility or not. And, and as committed mayors, we would like to solve the problems. Uh, the city which I represent, uh, Malmö in Sweden, uh, we started out some decades ago with a very strong focus on the green transition. Uh, we used to be an old shipyard industry. Uh, and when we saw that jobs disappeared and we had a hard economical time, we started to re reinvent ourselves or the identity uh, within the city. And we decided to make uh, some part of the transformation according to uh, very high ambitions when we come to green uh, 
uh, transition. So we started to develop new city district. We are a fast growing city and we started to develop new city district with a strong green focus with like the infrastructure in place from the very beginning when it comes to waste management, uh, energy, uh, mobility solutions and so on. And then uh, that is one important part uh, for a fast growing city. But then I realized that when I met mayors all over the world, that in the beginning, we talked very much about the green transition. But uh, then I realized that when we talk about how to create real sustainable cities and, and environment, we need to, to, to work as hard with the social sustainability. Uh, we can't make the green transition if it's not affordable for our citizens. So even though we develop new city districts with green infrastructure in place from the very beginning, 90% of our inhabitants do live in already existing parts of the society. And we need to refurb, we have to, to work with energy efficient solutions in the already existing part of uh, society. And we realize that it costs a lot of money and we can't do it in a way that makes people move due to high living cost, for example. So um, when we started uh, to plan the World Congress in Malmö, uh, my idea and the, the, the ICLE organization idea was to, to work with the fifth pathway that ICLE has been pointing to, uh, which is the part where we work with uh, people-centered uh, development. So when we, we develop the policies that we, we're working with, we have to have a strong focus on, 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 on the people living in our societies. So high ambitions when it comes to, to the green transformation, but also high ambitions when it comes to fight for a more sustainable, equal societies with living conditions that are good for all our citizens. That's the main focus, I would say. And I think whether all, all over the world, this is a challenge that we, we share. So when we started to work with, with the, the Malmö Committee, uh, I realized that we have Lots of cities uh, that are actually interested in develop uh, in developing uh, uh, those different perspective together. So already when we launched the Malmö commitment, uh, we had like uh, eleven pioneering cities from the very beginning, and we decided to work together. And one important part, if you if you sign the commitment, is to identify the the uh, key sustainability challenges that you face in your city, and then to the next step is to design a smart uh, social equity indicators to be able to to actually measure and monitor the progress, and then. Uh, like the next step is to use this material and report it and and um, showcase your success and maybe showcase your failures as well. We learn from both. And then uh, it's also an important part to engage the local community, our neighbors and so on to support the development. So this is this is short the background for why we 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 launched the Malmö commitment and why I'm really happy to see that we've seen uh, raising interest in in actually signing the commitment or be part of the transformation uh, transformation with a very strong focus on both the green transformation and the uh, people centered development. Uh, so that's the short background. Thank you very much, Mayo, for that background and for conveniently very launching us into the next phase of um, today's event. I think I'd like to carry on specifically speaking on your city leaning in particularly to ICLE's fifth pathway on people-centered development. I think it's once again very important to reiterate that this is 
Beyond it being ICLIS pathway is a global agenda. The foundation of the sustainable development goals is actually grounded in the very crucial principle of the interconnectedness, which underscores the welfare of the people in our cities and is very vitally tied towards the health of our ecosystems. History has demonstrated and continues to show us even till this day, the limitations of many of the traditional development focused approaches. It has proven to be inadequate in giving truly enduring and sustainable solutions towards much of the challenges that we face and which do not replicate inequities. In light of the shortcomings, there is a need for a transformative shift. And I'm excited to hear about what your city is doing with regards to those sorts of shifts. Because what we urgently need all around the world, in your city, in cities in Africa, in North America, in South America, in Asia, in Europe, is an agenda that firmly places humans and their vulnerabilities at the forefront of all of our development initiatives. On this point, I'd like to open up this leaders dialogue and come back to you once again, Mayo. Katrina, and just ask, what are the key sustainability challenges that your city, and I know you've alluded to some in your introductory speech, the current challenges that your community still faces in spite of what I would say are great efforts on your part, and what innovative approaches have you taken to address these challenges in a way that is equitable for all? and for the communities in Malmo. Thank you. Uh, I would say that when we started to, to work with this Malmo commitment, we identified uh, some uh, key sustainability sh challenges for us. And in the case of Malmo, we identified a challenge when it comes to affordable housing, for example. We are fast growing uh, and newly produced housing it's much more uh, expensive than the old one and as i said before uh, when we refer already existing housings it tends to be more costly and uh, and, and uh, more expensive for people living in this with uh, uh, in the flats for example and that's a huge challenge and i think that's something we share with lots of cities that are growing fast and then we have a strong focus on sustainable food for all. And we have also a strong focus on creating more circular economy to be aware of when, when we consume, uh, we better try to use uh, the goods several times and, and, um, and work in a, yeah. well, in a more circular way. So that's what we, we try to, to uh, keep in focus when it comes to, to the Malmö commitment. Thank you very much. Um, Mayor Regina, I think I should probably turn the lens to you now and ask from an African perspective, what has been some of the key sustainability challenges that your municipality has faced and what has been some of your ways to equitably address this? Yeah, thank, thank you so much, uh, uh, Denny, for making me be part of this uh, discussion. First of all, um, I'm a mayor of uh, Nansana municipality. It is located in the central region and uh, it's one of the highly high urbanizing municipality within the country. Uh, due to the fact that uh, its proximity to Kampala Capital City Authority makes this uh, mm. one of the areas where there's a lot of dumping. Basically, when you look even at our growth rate, Nansana municipal is is uh, 4.1% compared to the national which is 3.1%. The major problem that I'm facing as a mayor is first of all, the garbage management. We have a big issue on garbage. 
And uh, this garbage problem, when I came in, I'm running my second term. I'm on my seventh year within the municipality. We found a lot of littering within the municipality. So what we did was to ensure that we use the to build their capacity to become companies. And so when we add service delivery in the municipality, they are able to compete and they are trying to help us to make the city clean. However, this could not be done without paying some money. So what we did, we had to put in, in a place what we call a polluter pay policy, where each individual, each household was supposed to pay, which is becoming a challenge. Uh, and uh, of course we can't do without it. However, we are finding ways on how I shall talk later on the approaches that we use to ensure that there's equity within the municipality. Mm -hmm. And the other major ban challenge is the issue of unemployment among young people. Because uh, we, I have a highest number of young people, it's almost 70% of my population, of which is currently 600,000, are young people between uh, 15 up to, to 35. And it, this is doubled by, um, of course, uh, there is a lot of uh, displacements where people are coming to find opportunities in, in, in Nansana, they are displacing our families. So when they have nowhere to go, they resort to uh, extremism, violence, and we are finding it hard. So what I did is uh, to come out with uh, what I call my legacy goal to run up to the 2026. And uh, the legacy goal is about introduce, reducing unemployment among young people by 25%. So when I talk about it, then they are able to sort that, to, to, to feel that they are part of the municipality. And lastly, the other major challenge, the issue of environmental degradation, because uh, Nansana is uh, uh, full of wetlands and forests. So these people who were unable to pay, they are settling in wetlands and also find it hard to do garbage disposal. They are disposing within the wetland. And uh, likewise, also the rich people are trying to construct industries. Industries have become a problem. And they have, uh, first off, uh, water sources. My people can't get water. There's a lot of contamination of the water sources. We, um, according to the, uh, the health department, we are getting a lot of blue babies within the municipality. So it's a major problem that we are facing as an answer now, municipality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the issues which are the, the certain which are that we, are, we can't manage as for now, but of course we are trying as we shall talk more about it. Yes. Thank you very much, Mayor. And before I come to you, Mayor Koba Musa, Mayor Regina, I just want to ask a, a bit more on some of the issues that you raised. Um, I think the one major thing between you and Mayor Katrina, and I guess that will also be reiterated by Mayor Koba, is the high urbanization. Um, added to that is the fact that Africa is poster, poised as the highest urbanizing continent in the world. And that has posed a challenge to everybody. But Mayor Regina, you mentioned about 70% of your population currently being made up of young people aged 15 to 35. That is an incredibly high number. Some people may see it as a disadvantage, but I think that there is a lot of advantage there and untapped potential there. I just wanted to have a sense around what, how you see young people within your municipality as a resource for the now and for the future and how or if there are any particular strategies through which you walk young people along on this journey of equity towards a sustainable future? Okay, basically uh, on the positive side, uh, young people is a resource for mobilization of uh, municipal activities. How? Uh, other municipality, we have earmarked money for youth events like sports, and uh, we have invested money in sports. So when you bring them on board, they are able to, to understand and change their behavior so fast. So when they understand the problem, they are able to go and mobilize communities to do uh, municipal activities. 
Then in terms of equity, we have tried to ensure as executive to put a policy, let's, let's on procurement. We have agreed that 30% 30 30 of all procurement within a municipality should go to young people. Then when it comes to recruitment, any activity like uh, other mayor, I, I can have, I can of course uh, be able, I have a mandate to put into place committees and to be able to have uh, staff who, are, who can work on, uh, on local. So when you look at our city, majorly most of the Lodi gangs are young people. And they are, um, I don't only look at young people, but also I bring the issue of gender. They are part of, uh, these are women, uh, they are women and also uh, young men. Okay, boys and girls who are able to do work, and these at least they are above 18 years, 18 after, because when you say below 18, that will be, they call it what child labor. Then also, yeah. I've tried to have a youth desk within my office, the youth desk coordinates all the youth councils because you have youth councils from the grassroots up to the municipality. When I came in, there was no coordination system, so I had to put a youth desk in, in my office to have the PA who is a man and also secretary who is who is a, 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 a woman, then also the youth coordinator who is trying to, to connect these young people and ensure that they work with us. Then I'm also going ahead to ensure that under recruitment at, a, at the district level, the, these young people are given an opportunity. And also we are in the process of uh, developing the bylaws. And these bylaws will ensure that we involve young people at the stage of development, straight from the village then at the parish and also after the municipality and the division level. So I'm trying to see how can I work with them. And eventually I've um, established what I call NANSA, not post COVID government initiative. So in that in initiative, young people have 30% and also the women have 30%, both on the board and also in, uh, in the operational as in administration. Yeah. Thank you so much for providing those insights into a specific young people, but also thinking beyond just young people, more like vulnerable people, including women. It's great to see the ways in which the thinking is gradually evolving and we're beginning to recenter most of our initiatives along those who truly need those interventions. Mayor Koba Musa, great to speak with you again. And and I think I'm just going to also give you the fair chance and redirect question number one also to you once again, just to get a sense around what's happening in both city. What are the key sustainability challenges that your city currently faces and what approaches is both city taking to address these challenges from an equitable perspective? Thank you very much, Dafumini and also Katwi, welcome and thank you for this audience. When I started, let me, let me digress a little. When I read about Malmo, I just wanted to say, uh, Katwi, can you come to Bo? Then I shift to Malmo. I read about Malmo, how Malmo look like, how it's one of one of the successful cities in in the world and whatever what they told us about it when i read about it yeah coming to your question there are diverse challenges and successes one thing we should know bo is centrally located and it's been surrounded by wetland that's one huge blessing we are having it's been surrounded by wetlands and also, I was given the opportunity last year to travel to Ghana. We discussed about these wetlands, what's our commitment, and what are the challenges we are facing. Challenges, you can see people can just litter waste to our wetlands because of we don't have a center where we can deposit our waste. So, and we don't have the opportunity to do door-to-door -door collection. And because of that, people can just collect waste from their localities, from their environment houses. They go and dump it wherever they feel like. And also problem, people can just litter anywhere. We've done a lot of sensitization. 
But the main problem, just now before I came to this meeting, I was with the waste management and the SMEs pertaining this waste collection and the recycling. We have different SMEs that are doing recycling and also the NACT project, which is clean cooking, making those stoves from all our waste and making some different uh, items from waste. But we are facing, but the good thing, the successes, we always tell them that the mindset also, we have to put, tell them the mindset. Mindset in the sense, we sensitize them that waste should not be littered around. We do community engagement. We always, so those are some of the successes. And by meeting them, by doing, meet our local leaders, we call them to a meeting also in my chamber yeah, last two months, that these are the problems we are facing. And also we have come out with a by law or community law. Because when you come with a by law, it has to go through processes. You can take it first to parliament, you want to put it there so that it can become laws. And because it's a long process, we decided to make community laws. So then those community laws, we are implementing them. That anybody litters, if you cut a tree, that you do not plant any other tree, it's a problem to you. And also the youths also, we are engaging a lot of youth. We have the university here. They are doing environmental studies on climate as well. But even this past Saturdays, we did our cleaning. Every month we are doing a monthly cleaning. Every Saturday, last Saturday of the month, we are doing cleaning just for us to reduce the waste and also to sensitize people how to plant. We are also doing tree plantings because for the waste for our wetlands, when we went to Ghana the last time, we made a commitment. The commitment we made is to how to take care of our wetland, how to take care of our property, that the west, the wetland, how to maintain them. And we have we have highly concentrated on those particular issues that we have to sensitize people. And we also are trying to plant trees in the city also because of the deforestation. People are just cutting charcoals, burning woods, and also those things. Within the city, we've put that one to end. But if people who engage more for them to execute those laws, for them to execute those proper, those um, actions, they are the youths. Just as, um, Mayor Regina was talking. We also we have youth that are very determined to do the work to also help us on environmental issues, and they are still on it. We just as I said, university students came out the last time. They are very much interested in the climate system. How because if you watch now, as I'm, if, if you watch even my face, I'm sweating seriously. The energy also is a big challenge to us. As I'm talking, we don't have lights. I'm just using my laptop. I'm using hotspots on my phone. The system, the light has gone off. Just my wife is not working. So all those problems, like the energy also, is a big challenge to us here in Sierra Leone. We are facing huge challenge on energy. And also that one, we also writing project. We also ask for the energy like solar to be installed so like instead of this renewable energy that we are going to. And also, we are also talking on energy from waste to energy. We are also engaging people waste to energy, how we can get energy out of the waste. And also, instead of the cutting, char uh, burning charcoal, using fuels, using also those other things. There's also a project we are coming like we are pleading to have like the immobilities. Other nations, you can see they are not using fuel. They are not using engines on bicycle, on uh, tricycles, two wheel uh, uh, mobilities, or even the, the, the buses that we are using. That one also is on the pipeline that we are writing projects so that we can avoid all these other 
equipment machines that are using fields, they are using all other things. That one also is there. And it's engagement we are doing. We are writing projects. We are engaging the government, the central government. We are engaging the civil societies. We are engaging organization. So, but our success is, is engaged, is fruitful. The people are receptive. They are always ready to do. But the, the youths, we are highly engaging them so that because they are the engine of the nation, the energy they are having, the old ones cannot have it. So they are going, we have also an organization, youth organization, with, they are calling themselves Clean Bow. We have those organizations that they are going from place to place, they can collect the waste. But for us, they are more and a city for a city to stand on its own and to improve the way it should be if you are able to manage the waste in the city. Mm. Because for floodings to clear canals, all canals are, 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 are blocked or there are um, some flooding ones and all of that. Thing. So flooding will happen. We are also engaging them that no flooding. We are cleaning the canals, the drainages, and so. But all those is being done by the youths. Mm -hmm. We are engaging the youths. We are engaging the local authorities so that they can sensitize people in their community. Also, we are engaging the 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 councillors, our councillors in the city, that they also have responsibility. We are also using the media so that they can sensitize people on how to sensitize people. Appertaining to cleaning the forestation, the renewable energy and so solars and all those things. So we are all those, those things are our successes because they are really cooperating. No sooner you call them to a meeting, they will come. And the, the commitment we took in Ghana on mm. that we are also doing that one because it was a commitment that we we involved in reno, uh, renovation, street um, cleaning, and so many things. Those were commitments we made, and we are still bent on that. And we are looking to that. We are making our commitment towards those things. So Thank those you are... very much, Mayor. Thank you so much for that deep dive into some of what the challenges, but also the opportunities are within both city. For context, the commitment which the mayor is referring to relates to Ikli Africa's Urban Natural Assets Project. And in October last year, we held a convening where we brought together our UNA cities. This year, UNA is, uh, is 10 years and has footprints in 10 cities across Africa. And based on that, commitments were made to nature. And I'm very, very happy to hear that those commitments are on the ground and are taking off. Um, I want to say a very big thank you to all mayors, to Mayor Katrin, to Mayor Regina, to Mayor Koba Musa. You've highlighted for us what the successes are. And indeed, we can't only look at the negatives. We, we need to be very aware and recognize what, in the midst of very difficult terrains, successes are emerging. I think I want to give you an opportunity, and we'll go in the same order, to think through the successes that are emerging, but also beyond the successes, even within the failures. What learnings have emerged for you as leaders of this city, but also what learnings are emerging for the cities in and of themselves and the people who live in the cities? So I just want us to take a reflective pause towards the learnings that are emerging, whether be it from the successes 
or even from the failures. I always believe that even within failures are learnings for the future. So in areas where we've been successful or not very successful, what are some learnings that you think have been useful to you and to your leadership of your cities, but might also serve as key learnings for other African cities and for cities even in the global north also? Mayor Katrin, I'll start with you. Thank you. Uh... First, I would say, it's just as a reflection on Mary Regina, 70% uh, of uh, young people, that's a lot. Uh, and I think that's that's a great uh, possibility in, in such a young population. Normally, I say that that Malmö is a very young city. We are indeed a global city. We have 100 and different, uh, 180 different nationalities uh, within our city, and 50% are younger than 35. And if you look in a Swedish way, it's it's a very young population. But compared to yours, then we it's not that young. <laughs> um, with that said, I I would say one of the key success factors in Malmö, I would say is that we work really close to uh, all actors uh, in Malmö, uh, the business sector, the civil society, and I think it's important to, to work very close together. It's not an issue for the municipality itself uh, to be able to, to create a sustainable city. We have to engage everyone, different organizations, but also we have uh, like different contracts with different businesses uh, and everyone is contributing in some way and one important thing about the leadership is to make everyone aware and try to give the way or point out the way so we are working very tight together uh, and some businesses are able to deliver in 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 some fields and some organizations are able to to develop a, a certain city district for example but i think uh, the success factor is to admit that you can do a lot but you can't do it all and you have to use mm the power from everyone within the city and also from people coming to the city for for work on an everyday basis uh, for example so and again commitment uh, and create an awareness and and um, support all different local initiatives i think that's one of the success factor thank you very much waste management or whatever it is everyone need to be very very committed yeah. Thank you. Mayor Regina? Yeah, I think uh, one of the successes and learnings that I uh, realized is uh, looking at uh, national and municipality low incomes. We are able, by use of these existing youth groups or the women to take on garbage collection, we are able to reduce on expenditure on uh, garbage and uh, looking at our expenditure on garbage is really, really very minimal because garbage is collected on a timely basis and other city we don't encounter any riots within the municipality. So it doesn't mean that uh, when you have low, uh, low resources, you can't manage such big tasks. So that has been a learning within the municipality. So we are able to save money and this man has been used to purchase equipment like the grader. Then we are also able to purchase the garbage land. We have a garbage land disposal now. While well, you also we are able to get a lower. So this service really helps us to grow as a municipality. Then secondly, we can leverage on the local raised revenue. How? When the our motto now is keep Nansa clean and green, we have attracted many business people. There are so many upcoming growth centers uh, looking at uh, our income right now. In terms of local revenue, we are still very, we have really improved a lot because by the year it came in, we are having 1.5 billion Uganda shillings. But now we have moved on to something like 9.5 billion shillings. This in a way has uh, boosted our local revenue. We are able to pay staff, we are able to increase council allowances. 
and uh, uh, this has enabled us to have a stable council. It has also improved the trust within the community. People trust us, the citizens, because of a clean city. And also, this has also contributed to a lot of volunteerism. We have many CBOs, community-based organizations, which are coming on board to register here to, to as climate uh, CBOs and to ensure that they are able to do voluntary work within the municipality. And lastly, uh, when we increase the, the, the business sector, we have increased and uh, somehow in, compared to the employment of young people. So there has been a reduction in the insecurity in the, in the, in the municipality. And also having gazetted areas, recreation center, we didn't have recreation centers, but when you planted trees, now people are able to come and rest into those sheds. And this has really beautified the place. And uh, I'm happy young people are able to come and do some internet work on it. This has contributed to social cohesion among the young people within the municipality. And people are happy, they are happy because NASA is a municipality of choice, being it is skinny now and green. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mayor. And finally, you, Mayor Kobe Musa. Yeah, there's an adage says everyone in, no one out. So you should not let everybody out. Everybody, this is an involvement situation. You have to involve everybody for you to succeed in any institution, despite of the council that we are working. Anywhere you find yourself for a success, for a success to somebody, you involve everybody. One also, we do community engagement. That's one of our successes. And that's one thing we can do so that we can succeed. The civil societies, if you see, I was so impressed because we have been working with them for this past, before the cleaning on this past Saturday, civil societies were out there sensitizing people that they should not throw waste plastic sheets because, because of the pure water that we are using. So those sachets, they always, anybody drinks water, use it just littered around. But the civil society they are out there, mount their own set, use their own vehicle, going out to sensitize people that they should not litter around. They should take their debts from putting them into the trash cans that we have placed around the township. That one has happened. And also involvement of the youth groups. We are involving youth groups in diverse way pertaining our waste collections and also sensitization and they are most of them 90 percent of them are being involved in waste collections the youth they are hello mayor koba also they have you can see them the you they they have passion in collecting waste they have mm. passion in putting all their energy. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. No, Somebody you can called. go ahead. You froze for yeah. a bit. You can go okay, ahead. Okay. So the stakeholders also. Here, when we want to do most of our activities, we involve stakeholders. Because sometimes there is also people in the society or the community where you find yourself. You might think you are working, you are doing it, but if you don't involve the stakeholders, some of them, we see it, they just turn blind eyes to it and give deaf ears because you did not engage them, you did not involve them. And this is what yeah. we are doing. We meet the local community empowerment, the chiefs, the stakeholders, the people that are around this, the community, we involve them. Also, we use our councillors that every little thing you want to do in your locality, the local mm. authorities and the stakeholder within find themselves their stones we are taking. And it has been so fruitful because when we involve them, even when we want to do cleaning, we want to do anything pertaining street trading, also when we involve them, they can give us the support how to clean, mm. push back the traders back, and how to do so. The, the best thing is to engage. No one, everybody in, no one out. So we can solve. Thank things. you. 
Thank you so much. I think the emerging theme from this dialogue is leveraging the power of multiple actors. And I absolutely love the adage which you used, Mayor Koba, everyone in, no one out. Reminds us once again to center people in all of our initiatives. I think I'll wrap up the leaders dialogue section of this webinar by handing over to you, Mayor Catherine, for any closing reflections or questions that you may have for your peers. It has been a pleasure to facilitate this. Thank you very much, uh, Funmi, for leading the dialogue. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Regina and Mayor Kobe. It's really interesting to, to listen to, to your work or your concerns and what's important in your cities. Uh, and I, I really hope that we in some way could uh, uh, support each other and uh, collaborate. Uh, indeed, we have a lot of things that is very uh, different, but a lot of things that are really similar uh, between our cities. Uh, and I don't know, uh, it, it, is it um, uh, the case that Joe is presenting Malna commitment a little bit more, or is this like wrapping up? Are you giving the word to the floor to Joe later on? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes. And I just would like to say uh, <laughs> thank you very much for for sharing your experiences and taking your time to 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 take part in this uh, dialogue. Very useful for me, um, and I think as. Uh, as one of the mayors in 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 uh, Ikle Gexcom, I think it's very very uh, important that we work closely together and share our best experiences. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Over Perfect. to you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, Funmi, I absolutely agree. I think Mayor Koba summarized it perfectly with everyone in, no one out. Um, it's almost a perfect segue to where we're trying to advance now with the, the Malma commitment. Um, so uh, Katrina, as you mentioned in the introduction, since we launched the Malma commitment back in uh, 2022, we've been working with eight, uh, sorry, 11 uh, Malma commitment pioneers in identifying the the challenges that they have when it comes to equitable, sustainable development and the different approaches they're taking and exactly how they're working to uh, identify the indicators they can use to monitor their progress and to, to build up a bit of knowledge uh, in this space. Within the, the work that um, we do as ECLE with the over 2,500 local and regional governments we're working with, we know that there is much more work happening in equitable and people-centered development uh, within the network. So we do really want to bring all of this together. Um, and from the examples that we've heard today uh, and the importance of exchanging on these either good practice or on overcoming different challenges, we're looking to expand uh, the, the Malma commitment and bring on many more cities, towns, and regions to, to support these efforts and to share the learnings you've made or to identify the challenges that you have and to connect with peers from around the world who can help uh, in addressing those. So from the work that we're doing, some of the benefits we have is, again, just to connect with other leaders, other um, cities working on similar approaches, and just to see where you can collaborate, where you can benefit from each other, um, and, and share the learnings that you've made. We've also been bringing together a number of tools and resources, examples of good practice from a number of projects that have taken place within the ECLA network in this space. Uh, and we want to share that with as many uh, cities as possible to help you further your work on this. And again, um, I can't iterate it enough. It's really just about being able to share that knowledge and collaborate with others. So if you want to more formally be part of this process, we are uh, inviting local and regional governments to support the Malma commitment. Um, and it's really three easy steps to follow. Um, the first, we have a form on the website. So if you go to malmacommitment.org, you can fill out the, uh, the supporter form. It takes probably about one minute of time. We would then follow up with you and ask 
that you complete a basic profile about your city or region so we can understand the context in which you're working. And then um, as we indicated at the beginning, to identify what are those one to three sustainability challenges that you are prioritizing in the next years, especially with this lens or this focus on equity and people-centered development. This will also help us to understand best in those communities working with the Malma commitment, what are some of the priority areas or can we connect you with some of the pioneers who've already made some experiences in this space and help to facilitate a bit more of that exchange? And finally, um, in terms of that exchange, the next more concrete uh, moment that we'll have is in June this year. So at the next Eclair World Congress, which will be in Sao Paulo uh, from the 18th to the 21st, we're looking to convene the pioneers and the supporters of the Malmo commitment to have an in-person exchange and to again, really talk. I mean, today's discussion has been fantastic hearing about the different approaches and challenges and now to really scale this up and to connect us with um, again, local and regional governments from, from all around the world, from the Eclay network, and to, and to see where we want to collectively advance and how we can tackle these challenges. So if you're also interested in engaging in that part of the, the discussions, we welcome you to, to visit the World Congress website, uh, register today. And again, we hope to, to connect with you in, in any capacity possible. So I will leave it at that. Again, thank you, everyone, especially a big shout out to the city of Malmö and to Mayor Katrine for really um, driving the leadership on this and making this a priority for, for the Eclay Network. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joe. And um, I re-echo most of your words. Thank you so much to everyone today for joining us. But just before we go, we have one more interactive activity where we would want you to please respond to the question. You can either scan the QR code or the link has been posted into the chat also. And you can click on that link to respond to the question just before we close. I think we have about three minutes more. Just telling us what sustainability challenges facing your city or your community you feel the least prepared to address, especially regarding social equity. So from the conversations, we've seen that there are certain areas that it has come up very strongly where there is preparedness to address, but there are certain areas that we believe there isn't so much of preparedness and there's a lot of support still needed. Would like you to please just identify those for us. And for me, if I can jump in on this as well, uh, this question mm -hmm. is a little bit of a, a teaser as well for the dialogues we'd like to have in Sao Paulo. So we're hoping that Thank from you. the information we can compile, this will also help guide the direction that those discussions may take. Yeah. Housing is coming up quite strongly, the rural urban migration, plastic pollution, waste management, equal school for children, diversity and racial equity, equal possibilities for all, the evolving potential of the youth, income inequality and job creation, digital divide, that's a huge one. Okay, so 
On that note, we say thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for giving us the last hour, for our mayors, the last hour and a half, and for engaging with the conversation and for really being upfront and frank about the challenges, but not just stopping at the challenges, also showing us what opportunities are there and what is emerging as learnings and as successes. Um, a huge thank you for to the city of Malmo for facilitating this conversation. It has been a very delightful conversation to facilitate. Thank you very much to Mayor Regina. Thank you so much for being a champion from the African region of people-centered development in the African region. Thank you to Mayor Koba Musa for continuing to reiterate that we must stick to the commitments which we have made to people and to nature. And to the entire um, city of Malmo and the World Secretariat at ICLE, we say thank you so much for all that you've put into making this a success. Joseph, any closing words? No, just thank you very much. We hope you'll want to support the Melma commitment and we hope to see you in Sao Paulo as well. Thank you, everyone.